Good morning, I'm Nana Sartania and I'm here with Sharon Sneddon and we are presenting the work of the SSC students we supervised on student staff co-creation of equality, diversity and inclusion focused teaching material. Students were in year three at the time and have just completed the modules that teach subject specific content and clinical reasoning via small group teaching sessions called case-based learning. Majority of the cases, while being reviewed annually, were constructed a number of years ago. Concept of making them compatible with modern notion of EDI was not yet sufficiently adopted. But, I, but the need to modernize teaching material and remove any unconscious bias and historical colonial influences has resulted in us proposing this project and students have worked with us to attempt and create fairer curriculum. This slide on EDI action plan highlights curriculum and program structure as an important place to address equity. It starts with recruitment and retention, emphasizes differences in teaching race-based clinical protocols or formulas, talks about monitoring assessment and progression of minority groups, and then about revising policies and procedures for EDI accordingly. The model for improvement will yield the change via sustained act, plan, study, do cycle. It is clear from students that they feel there is no adequate coverage of specific evidence-based health differences, and they ask for more EDI teaching via NSS. So why does it matter? The colonization movement has been gathering pace for a number of years now and has highlighted inequalities arising from colonial influences. The paper published in Academic Medicine in 2019 offers a guide to revising teaching cases. The common issue they think is the lack of racial diversity teaching and when race is mentioned, it often acts as harbinger of pathology covered later on in the case. For example, a black patient presented often with sickle cell disease or a BME patient with type 2 diabetes. While it is important to highlight certain conditions are more common in certain groups, this must not be done in a way that encourages stereotyping. Patients of color and minority culture should exhibit a broad variety of healthy and unhealthy behaviors like other groups as well. Similarly, when disability is mentioned in the teaching material, whether it is physical, chronic, or intellectual disability, these topics are not well integrated in the curriculum. They are overlooked, not covered till later on in the course, and students feel they lack understanding and practical skill to deal with similar issues, resulting later on in poorer health outcome for those patients. We must modernize the teaching resources regularly, and sustainability of this approach is very important. So the approach we took involved a staff-student partnership. Traditionally, universities use a top-down approach in curriculum design. However, a collaborative reciprocal process through which both staff and students have the opportunity to contribute equally to course design and improvement can benefit the course as it takes students' experience into account. It equips them with the learning they need after university, develops higher levels of thinking, teaches self-management and increases their engagement. When students co-create, the learning environment is transformed and enriched by their lived experience and long term, this can lead to a better course that is more tailored to the needs, interests and aims of the students. So within this framework, our students reviewed the CBL teaching material and identified some areas for improvement. Race medicine, sex medicine, LGBTQ plus medicine and disability. They had the following objectives to address in this SSC. They started off by reading and understanding um, general EDI issues and also those in medical education. They then worked to understand the principles of staff student co-creation, understand and outline the impact of the isms and what uh, and the effect they have in medicine, and then thinking about how that is important to their future careers. Then they go on to actually analysing the teaching material in year three and they attempted to further the EDI principles and then propose changes based on the, the knowledge that they had gained. Our students were well placed to identify areas of improvement 
as they had just completed the third year of their course, which is the phase which case-based learning sits within, and they were very familiar with the material presented in these cases. The first group concentrated on exploring sex differences in medicine. The quote that they liked and we're presenting here um, really highlights why this difference in a medical approach exists. The book, The Second Sex, really struck a chord with the students. It's one of the most important pieces of literature um, and it inaugurated the second wave of feminism and was really a critique of the male dominated institutions which still exist in Western societies, despite the 72 years since this book was published. The students identified clinical cases in cardiology as being suboptimal in terms of teaching uh, sex differences in medicine. They highlighted how the case on heart failure could be improved. The differences in how this condition presents in women was not well taught according to them. The case solely focuses on signs and symptoms that were seen in males, and this may lead to underreporting the severity of the illness in females, leading to poorer health outcome for women, um, and even death from heart failure if signs are not recognised quickly. The second group concentrated on LGBTQ plus inclusive education. According to a study in BMC Medical Education in 2021, there was only 11 hours of LGBTQ plus teaching across five years of medical undergraduate curriculum in UK medical schools that were surveyed. Neither staff or students thought this was adequate. Our students in the SSC felt that there was a particular lack of transgender inclusive medical education. Um, students uh, highlighted discrimination against LGBTQ plus patients by healthcare staff, a quarter of patients witnessing discrimination, and only 5% really felt that they had adequate support from doctors, and this has the potential of contributing to poorer health outcomes in this group. Improving teaching on this topic really improves awareness of the issues amongst medical students and the changes um, proposed by this group of students in this project were successfully implicated, uh, sorry, implemented and we have tightened the language around some of the issues, for example, um, in, in STIs or just generally in the care of LGBTQ plus patients. Okay, the third group has concentrated on ableism in medical education. Students discuss both the hidden and also visible disability coverage in the teaching material, specifically in the context of chronic disease. The group thought it is important for medical students to better understand the chronic care model and to consider what the medical and social implications of this diagnosis might be. To consider the advice and support they as clinicians will give to a patient with a chronic thyroid condition, for example, and think about the patient's mental health. The students have offered suggestions for improvement here too. They suggested to include topics of female GU health or pregnancy within the intellectually impaired patient setting. They also proposed an entirely new case around a patient with intellectual disability who wishes to conceive. By raising the questions like this on sexual health inequalities in women with intellectual disability, they were hoping to open up a discussion on the damaging narrative of forced sterilization. And the last group concentrated on the topic of EDI and race. The students have identified the fault with a case where a black patient with chronic kidney disease might be misdiagnosed based on assumptions when calculating their renal function. The formula and the corrections used for this are based on historic observation of black study subjects having a higher baseline creatinine theoretized to be due to a difference in muscle mass between races. However, this hasn't been proven. While UK labs don't use this factor, the students thought this is a useful vehicle for, to initiate a wider discussion about racial categorization and diagnostic algorithm and discuss the consequences of overestimating renal function in patients. So, our students gave some general recommendations, and these included adding pronouns to all the patients that were discussed in the cases, as this is a really simple way to be inclusive of all genders. Students saw this as a deliberate move to show that inclusivity is an important topic in medical education. They thought that using patient infographics contrasting male and female presentations would be, provide good learning aids as well as the opportunity to be inclusive across all facets of EDI without it being explicitly EDI teaching. 
They also propose including diversity checkpoints so that the CBL material is reviewed as a whole. However, they also thought that any explicit EDI specific discussions might be better suited to structure clinical teaching or lectures, as these may offer a better medium for open ended discussions on the views and opinions that students have on gender, race, or disability equality. Whilst we think that the students' uh, suggestions have been really beneficial and we have successfully implemented these, the next steps in curriculum development with regards to EDI will be to, will be to consider intersectionality within these issues raised and any future work on gender or race bias should look at these in more depth. The last and perhaps the best suggestion from students is the wish for this EDI co-creation work to be expanded and applied to other aspects of the curriculum and, and also to analyse the EDI specific training outcomes in both students and tutors delivering this content. So to conclude, we think that student staff co-creation was beneficial to students as it empowered them to take ownership of their own learning. And for us staff, it was good also because we gained understanding of their views. So all in all, I think this is the approach we have to carry on and continue. And um, um, we are concluding on this. Thank you very much for listening and we are happy to take questions.